nature itinerary for Japan. Well, in this video, I suggested that you travel from Tokyo to Osaka, Nara, Kyoto, Hiroshima, Kintai Bridge and Kurashiki. I hope I got that right. These are all very busy tourist places. I think it's important for first time visitor to Japan that you have to see Kyoto and all this. But there are alternatives. If you like more nature, not so crowded area, and uh, want to see just a different side of Japan, I orientate this video mostly on UNESCO World Heritage. Why? Because these are really great sites. Uh, again, I would suggest to go in May, but not the first week of May because this is a golden week in Japan. Another great thing is you go during the autumn color but this itinerary starts in Hokkaido so most probably you fly into Sapporo I calculate for each destination four days three nights and for two weeks so this would be four destinations I give you six just to give you some ideas so let's start in Hokkaido. This is the Shirotoku National Park. This park is at the northeastern side of the Hokkaido Island. It is one of the most remote regions in Japan and it's known for having the most bear population in Japan. Well, I said in the beginning of the video adventurous. So you can book a lot of tours there, as you can see it here on the Japan National Tourism site. A boat tour, you can walk. There is so much to do and you maybe are able to see a bear. I always wanted to see a bear here in Japan, but um, it didn't happen. <laughs> and you might want to consider to bring your international driving license uh, because I think it's good to explore this area with a car. So the next is you're going south to the main Honshu Island. It's Shirakami Sanji. This is a forest area in Aomori and you can do a few hiking trips there. Uh, I know on some website it says there are no hiking trails but that's not true. You again go to the Japan National Tourism website and take a look there. The next is Hiraizumi. This is an absolutely stunning nature there and temples. There is the Fujiwara Heritage Park, the Ryo Zendo Cave, Murio Koen Ri, Shuzonji Temple, Motsuchi Temple, Geibike Gorge River Cruise. Sorry, it's a tongue breaker for me <laughs> to pronounce this. I think there are enough sites to spend four days there. So number four is Nico. Nico is um, maybe one, one and a half hour from Tokyo. I love Nico. I have been there very, very often 
and you have to read about the history before you go about all these places you should buy books to get informed because once you are there there is just not enough time to read through everything you need some background information also in Nico there are trails where you can hike so you are not limited to just go to temples and explore this for example there is this beautiful Akeshe Daira observatory and <laughs> you go with a ropeway up I don't know how much it costs actually you need a car there or you take one of the Hato buses there is a sign it says be careful there are bears <laughs> I mean it's like oh <laughs> This photo I took on that day, it was early spring and it looked very grey, so sorry for that. <laughs> there is this book from John Dogil, Japan's World Heritage Site. Unique culture, unique nature. Maybe you want to get that book and read through it before you go. If you have enough of nature, you can still go from Nikko to Tokyo. But if you want to avoid all this, you just go straight with the Shinkansen to Kanazawa and then rent a car, go to Gifu. There is the historic village of Shirakawa Go. As you can see, um, these are pictures from our winter holiday a few years back. It's an absolute stunning village, worth it to visit. The same time you can drive through the Nagano mountain range and I found this very interesting at that time. If you are interested in hiking around this area, there is a great book by 100 Mountains of Japan by Yuya Fukada. If you have that book, you might be able to find the right trail what you want to take. And again, you go to the Japan National Tourism site. The next and last thing is in Nara. It's not the usual Nara itinerary like you find it in my last video. This is sacred sites and pilgrimage routes in the key mountain range. I will give you here a website where you can see from NHK a report about this. You have to click yourself on it because it, I can only show a little bit and not more and not the whole uh, movie that's it for today I hope you liked it uh, I hope I gave you some ideas what you can do maybe you just go Tokyo Osaka Kyoto and then you say oh let's go to Hokkaido or let's go to Nikko or let's go to this sacred pilgrimage site so it's up to you <laughs> but everywhere you find tramping routes a lot of nature and you will be surprised what you can find here in Japan uh, maybe you want to google all insects and stuff like or oh, weird insects of Japan because yeah there is there are a few this is a brief overview of how your itinerary could look like and as you can see you are going halfway through Japan and if you go to the UNESCO World Heritage site you can still find more sites in Japan and one thing what I think if you have never been to Japan is a must is Hiroshima I think Hiroshima everybody has to see it's something maybe uh, Kyoto so still it's up to you how you put your itinerary together and you are flying back from Osaka think about your food um, in my last video I went into details what food to eat in Kyoto Osaka or other regions and the same is with this heritage site I see you next Thursday tschüss Thank you.